Okay, in this video, you should have the practice problems that we talked about, and then you should be on number three. Number three. Um, number three is this question right here. We're going to solve this question together, and I'm going to show you how to use the equation in order to make your solution, because for your major grade, you're going to have to make me a solution of this. And so, for example, this question says, prepare a 500 milliliter of a 2.50 molarity solution. It's exactly what I'm going to tell you for the lab. Um, and so you have to make it for me. How do you make it? You have to convert to grams. If you can convert to grams, then you can measure it out and you can start making me the solution. So I'm going to show you how to do this lab. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So calculate the mass in grams. So if you don't weren't here, then you need to know this equation. Molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. Okay. And so that's the equation we're going to be using. If I'm looking for mass or the grams, that is going to be related to the moles. Because if you forgot, we can convert from grams to moles or moles to grams, depending on which way we're going. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for moles and then I'll just change it to grams. And I'll show you in the steps that we've learned on how to do that. So in order to get rid uh, to solve for moles, I need to get rid of the L at the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by L on both sides. And so it'll be liters times the molarity is equal to moles. Okay, and there's my numbers there. There's the equation I'm going to be using. Let's make a table to solve this problem. All right, we're going to start with liters first. In my problem, I don't not given liters, but I am given 500 milliliters. Now that's related to it, so I'm going to use that number for my value here. I'll put 500 milliliters. And there it is, right there. Okay, and then we're going to put my line going down times molarity, so it's going to go at the top. So my molarity is 2.50. So let me put it in here. 2.50. And instead of putting a capital M here, I'm going to change it. And the reason why I'm going to change it is because right now, if I put a capital M right here, it's not going to cancel out with the milliliters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the capital M to, what is it equal? Moles over liters. So 2.50 moles over liters. This is the same thing as the capital M. It's just written differently so I can start canceling things out. Okay? So, so far I have the L times M. L times M. Next, I need to get rid of milliliters and liters because I'm looking for grams. Remember, grams is the end product that I want. So, I'm going to get rid of milliliters by putting it at the bottom because then it'll cancel out. And I'm going to put liters on top because that will cancel out as well. This is a prefix step. One goes with milliliter. Milli is one times 10 to the negative third power. There it is. Looks good so far. Next, I'm going to cancel things out. Milliliter cancels out. Liter cancels out. I'm left with moles, but they want grams. So I'm going to go one more step, and I'm going to change it to grams. Mole at the bottom, so it cancels out gram at the top. One mole is going to be the molar mass of this formula right here. So I'm going to add this up on the periodic table. Um, hold on, let me get my calculator. Okay, guys. 106.44. So I'm just going to plug it in. 106.44. And there it is. I'm going to multiply all of these numbers, and I'm going to get an answer. I'm going to get 133 grams of NaClO3. So what does that mean to get 133 grams? Let me show you during the lap on what you're going to be doing. Hold on, let me go grab some of the materials. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a 
you're going to grab NaClO3, and then you're going to grab a scale. Okay? So a scale like this. You're going to put it down. You're going to put the weigh boat on there, and you're going to measure out 133 grams. Then you're going to find the 500 milliliter flask. This is called a volumetric flask. This has a little line on it. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little line on this flask, and it basically means that line is exactly 500 milliliters. So since it's exactly 500 milliliters, then this is what I have right here. Um, I need to fill it up. I need, I'm going to add all the solid, the 133 grams. Then I'm going to fill it up with water. Now I'm going to fill it up with water to about right here-ish. And the reason why I'm going to fill it up only to right here is because then you can stir it. I can move it around like this to dissolve all of that NaClO3 in there. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. It looks like they're still solid. I'm going to keep going. And then once it's all dissolved, then I'm going to fill it up into about right here. Then I'm going to get a pipette and I'm going to add drops into it until it reaches the line, the line that I just showed you right here. Once it reaches that line, I am done with part A and I'm going to go show it to me and then I'm going to give you a grade for it. Okay. So a lot of information. Let's go step by step exactly how it should be. Step one, I should calculate the grams. Calculate the grams or whatever I'm looking for. So in this problem, this is how your task one is going to look. I'm going to find the grams, just like we did for number three, exactly the same steps. And I'm going to calculate for grams. Once I have the grams, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to weigh the grams. I'm going to weigh it. So let's say it was 133 in our last problem. I'm going to weigh out 133. Step three. Then I'm going to grab the correct flask. In this case, they want a 500 milliliter flask. So this flask, if you look right there, it says 500 milliliters. So I'm going to grab this one because that's what it says. Then I'm going to add the solid to the flask. That 133 I got, I'm going to pour it in. Now it's all in there. And I'm going to fill with some water. And the reason why I say some water is because I just want a little bit. Okay, I don't want a lot. I just want a little bit. Then I'm going to dissolve, uh, dissolve the solid. And how am I going to dissolve it? Once it's in here, you're just going to swirl it. You're going to swirl the water in the solid until so all of it's dissolved. Then when all of it is dissolved, last step, you're going to fill with water until the line. And then you're going to show it to me. Now remember, you can use any notes on the, on the lab. So if you write these down, then you can use them for the lab yourself. And that will be task number one. Test number two, on the other hand, you're going to be using a new equation. That one is M1V1 equals M2V2. This is called a dilution equation. And so what you're basically doing is you're taking the original liquid and you're going to dilute it by adding some water in order to get the solution. So let's read the problem. It says hydrochloric acid is obtained commercially at its concentration of 12.1 molarity. This would be molarity number one. Then it says, how many milliliters of the 12.1 molarity, HCl, must be used to prepare 2,000 milliliters of a 0.500 molarity? This would be molarity number two. So from this, I need to figure out, is this volume one or volume two? If you read the question, this volume actually goes with this molarity here. Because you see how it says 2,000 milliliters of a 0 0.500 molarity? So this is going to be volume number two. So what am I missing? I'm missing volume number one. So to solve for it, I'm going to divide by M1 on both sides. And so M1 cancels out over here. So it's volume one is equal to M2 V2 divided by M1. And there's my reaction there. I'm going to plug it in. So 
plugging it in, I'm going to start with M2. I said M2 was 0.500. Molarity. Volume 2, I said is 2,000 milliliters. Molarity 1, I said was 12.1. Molarity cancels out. And if I plug it in, I should get 82.6. Oops. There it is. 82.6 milliliters. This is volume number one, and volume number one goes with molarity number one. So this would be 82.6 milliliters of the 12.1 molarity HCl. And that would be the answer. So I would take 82.6 milliliters of the HCl, and I would add it to a 2,000 milliliter beaker, so I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to use a graduated cylinder and pour in here. Then I'm going to fill the rest up all the way to the line with water. And then there's solution number two. So dilution part is a little bit easier than the first part. But you still have to do the math and you still have to figure out how much you're going to be adding. So let's go step by step again on what you're going to be doing for task two. Here's the type of question that you will see for type uh, task two. Using your solution you made in task number one. Make a 250 milliliter of a 0 0.15 uh, molarity NaCl solution. So this is going to be molarity number one. I'm sorry, not molarity one. This will be molarity number two. This will be volume number two. Now, how would you know what molarity one would be? Well, molarity one is the original molarity from task number one. This would be the original molarity from task number one. So for step one on your list of things to do, just like in our last problem that we suffered for number four, we need to calculate volume one. That's how much of the original, the one that you made in the beginning, that's how much you're going to need to make the new one. Okay. Then after you calculate it, then you need to measure it out. You need to measure liquid. Um in a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinder. You get a graduated cylinder, fill it up. Number three, then you're going to add liquid to correct volumetric class. So in this volumetric class, it says 250 milliliters, so that's the flask I'm going to grab. And then last, I'm going to add water until the line. So that line that's on it, I'm going to add water until that line, and I'm done. And that'll be the answer. Okay? And then that's it. That's how you do the lab. So I would recommend, if you're still struggling, I would do number two and number five. Those are exactly the same as number three and four. And it kind of gives you a little bit more practice with doing the math. And it also, in parentheses, gives you the answer for those questions. So make sure you're doing those. And then when you're ready to do the lab, just let me know and you can go do the lab.